Hey, it's DK. Welcome back to my Gunpla 101 series. Today, let's talk painting. In Gunpla, you got three main paint types, usually. The first one is acrylics. Second, it's enamels. Third, lacquer. Acrylics are beginner friendly, often labeled as water-based, like Vallejo Air and uh, Gallery, are almost true water-based option. However, the Tamiya and uh, Mr. Abi's Aqueous are more alcohol-based despite the label. This, if you see these flame logos, that means they're not fully water-based. They have something else. Enamels offer durability and dry slower. It's perfect for detail hand painting. I think that's why my uncle had set in his drawer. Lastly, the lacquers. They provide unparalleled durability and they dry the quickest, but demands careful handling through their toxic fumes. Remember, safety first, proper ventilation, and safety gears are crucial, especially with enamel and lacquer paints. Whether you're just starting out or seasoned pro, choose the paint that suits your style and project needs. I started with lacquer spray for simplicity, but switched to acrylic with airbrush for both safety and convenience. I just couldn't stand the lacquer smell even with all the gears on. After switching to airbrush with acrylic paint, now I paint in my room. I still go out when I'm using lacquer paints. Before we move forward, let's clear up some confusion about thinners because I had them. I was really confused. Each type of paint requires its own thinner. When it's acrylic water-based, should be used with airbrush thinner, which is mostly distilled water with alcohol and some fluid retarder. When if it's water-based but alcohol solvent, they should be used with their own thinner. X20A for the Tami acrylic paint. Make sure it's 20A, because X20 is enamel thinner, but X20A is uh, acrylic paint thinner. They should really change their name. This is so confusing. When it's enamel, it should be used with enamel thinner. Simple, but so many choices, right? When it's lacquer, they should be thinned with lacquer thinner. The little confusion I had was between Mr. Color Thinner and Mr. Leveling Thinner. Mr. Thinner is popular, but many recommends Mr. Color's Leveling Thinner because it's got the retarder, which is the same thing as this. Mr. Color's Leveling Thinner is Leveling Thinner because it has this. Make the paint dry slower so they can level themselves using the gravity. Here comes like a second confusion. Like, do we really have to use all these thinners to be able to paint our gun plus? This enamel thinner is kind of must if you're doing panel line with the panel line accent color. Cause if you use lacquer to erase the panel line, it will erase the acrylic paints too. But do we really need all these different types? Not really. Strength-wise, lacquer thinner is most strongest. It could work with water-based acrylic, enamel, lacquer, of course. If you use water solvent paints with lacquer thinner, it will create, it can create residue in some gunks. So no water-based. But you can use everything else with the lacquer thinner. But lacquer thinner smells are so strong. So what I do is, these. My homemade airbrush thinner is compatible with water-based one. So I use these most of the times since they don't smell too bad. So in theory, all I need is lacquer thinner occasionally, but mostly the regular airbrush thinner to do all my paintings. And this creating homemade thinner it's straightforward. Many recipes online suggest two to one ratio, distilled water to 99% alcohol. I used 70% because this was all I can find. So I do one to one of 70% 
and then water. This is 120 milliliter bottle. So I put like half alcohol, half water, and I put two milliliter of airbrush flow improver. And I put two milliliter of fluid retarder to make it dry slower. So these four ingredients is all you need to make a homemade airbrush thinner, which thins almost everything that I use. But the goal is to make the alcohol about 30 to 40 percent. Since I'm doing one to one with water, this 70 percent will go down to like 30, 40 percent. And if you're using 99 percent, we go two to one to make the 99% go down to around 30 to 40%. That's the goal. Why should you prime your Gunpla? Priming is vital for Gunpla painting because it offers some benefits. It prepares surface for paints, ensuring the smooth finish. It enhances paint bonding between paint and a plastic, reducing the risk of chipping and peeling. It also improves the color vibrancy. Here we have four different color of primer. These three are Badger brand. This is Vallejo brand. Gray primer is ideal for classic Gundam color schemes. Maintains original paint hues. If you're not sure what primer to use, just use gray. It will work. The white primer. This one enhances brightness and vibrancy. It's perfect for lighter colors such as like a pastel tone or the lighter blue, lighter hue colors. And a black primer, it's best for, of course, dark customization. This one creates the depth and richness to color. And this black gloss, by the way, all these are matte, but this one's gloss finish. This one's tailored more towards the metallic color. And these are all water-based primer. I recently purchased these two, gray and a black. It says surfacer, but it does the same function as a primer. Aqueous surfacers are water alcohol based primer. Similar to aqueous color I mentioned earlier, I primarily use acrylic paints. However, using water based primer require extra step. Sand the surface of all the pieces to improve bonding between primer and a gunpla plastic. While it's possible to skip the sanding part, it often result in a weaker finish. So I have to sand everything and then put this primer on to be safe. Bought these to test out if it holds any better than the solely water-based primers. If it can help me save time and works better, I'll probably use this, but we'll see about that. This will be the end of part one, the lecture. I will have second video up and running it will be an exercise. Yeah, let's call it that way. Lecture and exercise.